Good morning. First of all, I would like to welcome you to our home, Echera. And uh, let me give you some facts and figures. We are really small, less than 2% of Spain, and very populated, and urban society. Although we have a very bad reputation, the crime rate is very below the EU level. And the Human Development Index is uh, above the EU level, uh, just behind Iceland and Norway. We are a very forest-based country. We produce the 10% of the wood produced in Spain. And the, com the organization of the country is quite complicated. We have three provincial councils and the Basque government. We work like a federal region and the forest competencies are transferred to the provincial councils. Uh, each provincial council, Araba, Vizcaya, and Gipuzkoa, has its own forest policy. And as you can see, in the coat of arms of Vizcaya, we have a pedunculate oak. And in the coat of arms of Gipuzkoa, we have three yew trees. Three of them have in common the figure of protective forests. It can be declared as a protective forest any forest land, public or privately owned, which is located in the head of, headwaters of watersheds to protect crops and infrastructures from water logging and avoid landslides. Uh, any forest which is in the perimeter of the water catchments to protect uh, the quality of waters, and any forest that is essential for uh, soil protection against erosion. Uh, all these ecosystem services are provided by forests, and in particular by forest soils. Thus, soil functions and um, the importance of soils is acknowledged in our forest policy, but implicitly because we don't have any explicit soil protection policy. Uh, we have quite precise regulation for the use of heavy machinery because we are a very mountainous country. Most of the territory is uh, located between 30 and 50% of slope. And as you can imagine, forests are located in a steep slope because lower lands are dedicated to agricultural lands, industry, infrastructures, and settlements. In Araba, they forbid the use of heavy machinery above 30% slope. And they explicitly mention that forest operation should avoid any soil disturbance or compaction. In Biscaya, uh, machinery can be used until 45% slope, and um, by they explicitly mentioned that these slopes are the maximum slopes allowed, and that in adverse weather conditions, forest operations should be restricted to fully prevent soil loss and soil compaction. In Gipuzkoa, they recommend spider excavators about 35% slope, and again, they mentioned that in adverse weather conditions, the forest operation should be restricted. As you can see, we have a regulation just trying to prevent soil erosion. Soil erosion has been recognized as a soil degradation risk in the Basque Country for more than a century because we were like this in the beginning of the 20th century. This is a picture in Biscaya, and we had no trees. Uh, the iron industry was our main industry since the Middle Ages. Uh, we still have iron, but at that time, uh, iron was like petroleum nowadays. And the coastal Basque territories played an essential role in the production of and marketing of iron in Europe due to the quality of our iron and the portability because we are very close to the sea. But the iron industry was a nightmare for forests. To obtain 100 kilograms of iron, they needed 2,500 kilograms of beech, holmoak, or oak wood. Besides this iron industry, shipbuilding, uh, several wars and diseases managed to deforest the Basque Country. So we have been planting for more than a century. And now we have the 55% of the surface covered by forests. And the 53% of these forests are planted forests. The main species used for this afforestation are Douglas fir in the eastern part of the territory and in higher altitudes, coexisting with larch, black pine, again in higher altitudes but more distributed to the south, eucalypts, which are in significantly increasing in the last years and mainly planted in the western part of the, U uh, of the country, <laughs> and uh, radiata pine, that is our tree par excellence. Uh, is planted in the attracting part of the region uh, because it cannot survive to the frost. 
first introduced in 1850s in the gardens of Subieta Palace by Carlos Adán de Yarza, but spread in the mountains of Biscay by his son, Mario Adán de Yarza, because uh, the growth rates surprised him. Uh, in the past country, the growth rates reported are between 9 and 11 cubic meters hectare a year, but in good sites, almost uh, 15, 16 cubic meters hectare per year. So these six species represent the 87% of the planted forests, but eucalypts and radiata pine represent the 70%. Our forest tree is defined as Atlantic Rim, Western forest type, and uh, our wood is basically used for packaging, for making boards, uh, for pel pulp and paper industry. But um, in the last years, the forest sector, uh, with the help of public administration, is promoting the generation of high added value forest products by sustainable forest management. At this moment, uh, these 70% of planted forests are driven by short rotation forestry and mid rotation forestry. Short rotation forestry for eucalypts between, uh, with rotation lengths between 12 and 15 years, and mid rotation forestry for radiata pine with rotation lengths between 35 and 40 years. The type of harvesting is uh, usually clear cut, and the logging system is a whole tree harvesting with chainsaw, processor, and bundler for eucalypts. Uh, logs and packed forest residues remain close to the forest roads, and the uh, forest tractor pick them up and bring them to the paper mill or a forest, -based, uh, forest biomass based energy production factory. The standard uh, logging system for pine wood is uh, log harvesting. Uh, with chainsaw and limbing and uh, skidding, tree length skidding to a landing area or a forest road and a truck pick them up and give it away. There is no site preparation for eucalypts until the third generation because of natural risk protein, but we have almost no eucalypt stand at this stage yet. And for pine boots, we, it can be used either a bulldozer, excavator or prepared manually. Planting is always manual. There are several differences between these two forest management, but the most important one uh, regarding the damage to the soil is the forest road density. The forest, forest, forest roads are essential access to provide access to the forest for wood extraction, but uh, the construction of roads is the most expensive and destructive operation to the forest, into the forest environment. They can lead to soil compaction increased surface runoff and uh, soil erosion. Due to logging system, in eucalypt stands, the forest road density is twice than in pine stands. But due to forest ownership, which is quite small, the average is two hectares and privately owned, uh, harvestable uh, forests are main, uh, most of the time uh, surrounded by another forest, the difficult forest operations and uh, sometimes you can find this kind of forest landscape where more than 10% of the stand is covered by forest roads. The risks for soil erosion and compaction. First of all, we wanted to evaluate the uh, inherent site sensitivity to these soil degradation processes. And for what, in the framework of forest project with the guidance of Instituto Superior de Agronomía de Lisboa, we have adapted the hazard assessment key developed by British Columbia. We applied this adapted hazard assessment key in a study area that we have been monitoring for several years. And that we got that soil erosion risk was high because 30% slope, it's clay texture and rainy climate. But forest management options can make the difference. In the same study area, which is located in the municipality of Saya, uh, we applied three different site preparation techniques. Uh, the manual one without mechanized forest operation and two mechanized forest operation, ripping, which consists of deep plowing up to 50 centimeters down, and scalping, in which forest residues uh, should be cleared with a front-mounted blade without touching the, uh, touching the soil. Uh, we monitored the soil loss for two years in 30 meters long and 10 meters wide plots. And as you can see, uh, the manual site preparation produced almost no sediments, and the mechanized forest operation produced up to 1,600 kilograms of 
uh, soil per hectare and year. Again, we applied the hazard assessment key for soil compaction and we got that soil compaction risk was very high. And after mechanical site preparation, we had a significant increase in bulk density uh, above 1.4 causing root growth damage to radiata pine. But besides, we had a significant decrease in available water content and reduction in uh, water infiltration. Uh, here, there is the soil texture of the territory. The yellowish part is the lightest, but most of the ter territory has high or very high soil compaction risk. Soil organic matter, uh, which in my opinion is the key element for soil quality, uh, we are not able to evaluate the risk of soil organic matter loss in our country, but uh, based on several studies, we can conclude that soil organic carbon content in the Basque forest is low, probably due to the past management due to iron industry. Uh, in the figure above, you can see the soil organic carbon concentration in the Cantab Cantabrian coast, and uh, it, Basque country, uh, soil organic carbon in the Basque country is lower than in Asturias or Galicia. In the figure below, uh, you can see the soil organic carbon saturation deficit in the planted forest in Biscay and north of Araba. And the zones in blue are those zones with low saturation deficit, in other words, with the highest soil organic carbon concentration. But most of the territory is far from the soil saturation. In this study, we compared a mature pine radiata pine stand with this, the adjacent two mechanized stands three years and 16 years after forest operations. And we observed that three years after operations, the forest floor was still absent. And even 16 years after forest operations, the forest floor content was half than in a mature pine stand. When we lose this uh, forest floor, we are losing site fertility. In this case, we lost seven kilograms of phosphorus and 25 kilograms of magnesium per hectare, which are the most limiting nutrients uh, for tree growth in the Basque country. But we are also losing more than six tons of carbon per hectare with direct in, uh, implications on climate change, Forest floor removal has uh, direct implications in the reduction of water holding capacity of the soils. We observed a reduction of 300% in the least limiting water range for plant growth. And uh, the increase in the bulk density can have also direct effects on the quality of waters. Uh, again, we are not able to evaluate the risk of soil biodiversity loss, but we know that uh, forest operations uh, alter significantly the soil microbial community, changing the gram-positive, gram-negative ba bacteria ratio and redu uh, reducing significantly the fungal biomass, which is essential for, uh, in the cycle of phosphorus. But the major risk for forest soils in the Basque country is the soil sealing. Here we compare the last two national forest inventories and we see that we are losing uh, almost 3,000 hectares of forest soils and more than uh, 4,000 hectares of productive soils. The perspectives for the future, the Basque society is demanding more and more services to the forest like carbon sequestration, recreational use, the production of raw materials, uh, the production of clean water, uh, jobs, and so on. And also, the Basque society is changing its consumption habits. Uh, it is demanding more and more greener products. Indeed, organic farming is booming. And the Europe's policy uh, has also direct implications because uh, biomass, forest biomass, uh, demand is increasing due to uh, Europe's 2020 strategy. And, and the climate change. The changes in temperature and rainfall that climate change is expected to bring about will make soils increasingly vulnerable and forest soil will not be an exception. So taking into account all these things, if we want to satisfy the demands of the society, we need, we need to di diversify our forest production and assure the sustainability in intensification. For that, forest soils and their risks 
to degradation, all the risks, not only erosion, need to be taken into account in the forest policies. It's important the implementation of a soil protection strategy based on the knowledge. Uh, on the other hand, forest managers need to know more about soils, and forest researchers need to increase the awareness of soils and help managers to manage them. And the society will have to pay for all the services it's asking to the forests. And that's it.